Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Coney, your art sherpa, and today I'm gonna to be introducing you to acrylic. So this is a great beginner class. If you're new to painting, we don't use a lot of colors. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility with tools. I'm gonna to show you how to draw the lips and do this. It's easier than you think. And uh, because this is based on um, a previous design that had gone fairly large, that had gone fairly viral, um, you know, from that I realized, oh, I would do this a different way if I ever did it again. So this is going to be really great even if you don't have the exact paint that i'm using because i am planning the lesson with you having maybe student paint or craft paint in mind but still wanting to get a fairly great result on the mic is my husband john hello he is going to help me with these goals by making sure you've got picture or picture that the camera is pointing at the techniques that i'm talking about or demonstrating that um uh, we answer questions during the show and then hopefully at the end that we'll have something extra and special to show you if all goes well. Huh. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. So uh, let's start out by the materials that we're using today. Um, I have an 11 by 14 surface here. This is a stretch canvas. On my palette, I have Cad Red, Phthalo Blue, Phthalo Green, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. sorry. One more time. There we go. Okay, sorry. I was busy looking at some other, other things. things. Sorry. Okay, Cad Red. Well, I know I, I asked you to look at them, so it's <laughs> on me. Um, Cad Red, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Mars Black, Cad Yellow, and Titanium White. I have a Posca pen. You could just use white paint if you don't have this, though I think Poscas are a lot of fun and a nice thing to have in your art kit for a variety of great reasons. I'll have them more and more in lessons coming up. I just like them as a tool, and I think that you will too. Um, let's go over the brushes real fast. Uh, when I've been designing, I've been writing down the brushes that I use, and that has been good and bad. Um, the good is that I know what we're gonna really need ahead of time. Like I've got my number eight Raphael Artney D brush here. You could use a filbert. This particular brush is made with a hog bristle, so it gives me a scratchy result. Yes, for sure, they make economy brushes with hog bristles. If you are a person who is vegan, then you'd wanna switch to a very stiff Taclon or brush that might be called a scrubber, something to get a similar result. This is a number eight D brush. Now, here's where uh, the pre-writing it down, I wrote down 20 round and I should have written down eight round. And that is because, remember how I said that there's no standard brush sizing? Uh, this here is a 16 and some were rolling around. I Oh, here it is. Here is a 20. So I just mixed up the lines and, and you can see they're not dissimilar in sizes, you know, just in actual size. But that's why I'm always like, brush lines don't have standard sizing. That's why it's aggravating a little bit. So this is the number eight Simply Simmons, the three quarter inch angle, the D brush, and a Princeton number one round. And that's all I'm gonna be using on this particular design. Are you guys super ready for this? I'm really ready for this. Okay. So here's a fun way that we're gonna do this a little bit differently. We're gonna sketch in, I'm gonna actually use pencil, the lips, okay? You, however, don't have to draw. I have a traceable that you can download and transfer onto the canvas. I even have a video on how to do that. So you're not expected to know, but many of uh, my students will ask for these explanations or these lessons or these instructions too. So I wanna make sure that I provide both. The traceable, if you're not ready to jump into drawing, and the drawing class, if you are. So let's kind of place our lips. We know we want them sort of centered here. And I'm gonna come down from the top a little bit and I want them sort of centered here and come down for that. And I need to make sure that I've got enough drip, right? So we wanna leave room for the drips coming down. Once I know, and I've given myself a little room on each side for the creases, a little room from the top for the arc, and a little room in the opening, that sort of helps me know, okay, well, I don't want to go further than this. At the center, I'm gonna begin by making little pencil lines that make little mountains coming up and over. All right, we're gonna just do a traditional kind of full lip. The line comes down and just flares out the smallest amount. So you see these come in and join in the center. It's a little bit like a heart that you bent out. Now coming down from that, I wanna come down a few inches and make a 
matching little round counterpoint here. And then we arc this up, matching that arc, and bring it down where they join in. The reason that we're doing it this way instead of painting it black this time, if you're wondering why I changed that, was when I painted things black and then went over it, a lot of people's paint didn't cover. And it's a lot to paint the lips white again. And I was like, you know, we're starting on a white canvas. We could just lean into that experience <laughs> and not have a hard time with this at all. Now, I do want a little bit of openness on the mouse. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to say, you know, at least a couple inches. And the center of the lower lip will pillow a bit. And then join the mouth. Now, this is a very idealized mouth. Mouths come in, like if you were doing portraiture, you would be paying more attention to the person's fullness of their lips, positioning. They can curl up, they can curl down. The variety, I'm gonna, as an artist, the variety in biological diversity until you start really looking at how we're the same and yet so different. Um, you, you just don't really get it until you see that. But when you do, then you'll be like, oh yeah, these are the typical lips, but lips aren't typical. And so, you know, that's something to think about. So if you're trying to do something specifically for a person and say it was their mouth, well, their mouth probably has a very distinctive shape and you'd want to make this lesson fit that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? If you're saying it was someone yes. in particular's lips, not just generalized ideal lips. I don't normally sketch it in pencil, and the reason I don't normally sketch it in pencil is it creates induced discoloration where the pigment can come up from the pencil, the graphite, through the paint and show on light colors or acrylics if it doesn't seal properly. But because of what we're about to do here, that's not going to matter at all. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I get it. It did not matter at all. <laughs> all right. Um, no, now right, we're going to just. Is this next step? Let's go ahead. Well, this we'll is still in the same step. Put the paint out there. And then... But I have to put out some paint. Yeah. So I'm going to put out my black paint first and a little bit of it. Because for this first step, I'm going to want to lightly sketch in these lip lines that I have with black paint so that when I go to um, paint the color over it the way that we're going to, the little workaround that makes even our inexpensive paint look better, um, I have this line that's going to show through and I won't lose my lips from the painting. So I'm going to come along here and just very lightly. Doesn't need to be dark. The drips we do with white and then the color later. And that's how we keep control of the drips. Oh, I've had many plans. So many plans. I swear, like, that's what I'm getting back to is that fun in um, just sort of figuring out how to teach these lessons to you guys. Yeah. You know, has been sort of fun. The weirdly, the shorts have helped with that because mm. having to figure out how to explain something in a minute has really stopped me and asked me uh, like kind of internally, how am I explaining things? It's just a light sketch with the black. I'm just making sure I've got a line that my yellow paint, which is quite transparent, will be able to see through. You don't need to hold the drips out yet because we're going to put them in with white paint and then dry them and then drop the color down. them. So that's going to make that very easy for us. It can be, you know, dark in the black. It can be light in the black. Um, it's not really going to matter. You've sketched your lines in. You're good there. So you're all right, and you just want to get this to where you're happy with it. Once you're happy with it, you're going to want to dry it with a hair dryer. My hair dryer is very far from me, so now I'm going to go rolling over to that. Oh, you don't have to take me with this, but I had a funny moment planned. It's okay. <laughs> Dry it with your hair dryer. So while she's drying with a hair dryer, we will say hello to everybody out there in YouTube and video streaming land because we stream wherever you're at. That's kind of cool how that works because the technologies that they say the internet is like a series of tubes and yeah, well, 
while we're in our tubes, why don't you hit the like and subscribe button, because this is a crazy tube. And it's a YouTube! See? Series of tubes! This is the YouTube. I don't know. That's what we gotta do. It's bad dad YouTube jokes. So, thank you for coming. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the little humany things where you push all the little buttons while we're waiting for her to dry the hairs, the black paints, because that's what we gotta do. And yeah. So I don't know if you could hear her shouting at me. She was saying that um, the reason why we're drying it so long is so we don't have the black paint combined with any of the other colors as we're doing this. That's what she was shouting at me. That's what I was shouting at him. Yes, I was. Is it so, um, not next step yet? Uh, you can put there. up the next step. I'm putting out my paint, and that can be part of the step. I'm putting out my... So these particular lips um, were really inspired by a box of crayons and primary colors and just that sort of bright and black sensibility, if you've ever done quilting. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun to get those put in there together like that. I did do some convenience colors uh, like the uh, thalo green. You could mix green from this palette, but um, I really wanted a very bright green. And the reason I'm doing the ultramarine and the quinacridone is for having a very bright purple. That's what inspired all of that, if you're wondering. That what happened there is something that doesn't happen very often in my paint, but that's separation. And that's a lot because of the moving and traveling and being on a plane and off a plane. And I have been uh, keeping my tubes incorporated. That's not the same as the cottage cheese that you sometimes see on paint that you never want to see. That's when you return it, if it looks like clumps of cottage cheese. But if it's clear and pigment, you can reconstitute uh, that. That's just the binder and the pigment. And sometimes during weird travel or a bunch of stuff like we've been through, like where it's, it's really been in a car, out of, like it's had a weird life <laughs> since I got that tube of paint. I would right. say so. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey for it, for sure. All right, I'm going to start with my round brush. Yes. You guys are ready for this? It's going to be good. All right. Now, there's layers of colors, but again, because yellow is so transparent, sometimes it can be very hard to get bright yellows over black. So by starting here with the uh, white canvas, I'm going to even add still a little white to my yellow. And I'm going to come here, and I want you to notice the curve of this brush stroke. You can go over, look what you can also do. You can go over your black lines, but still keep them because we're going to paint that whole surface black later. You see how we're doing? And there's a curve when I'm here at the center that sort of straightens out. And when I come to the other side, the curve bows to the sides that we're headed towards, right? So on the lip, the curve of my brush stroke will be center here, but start to bow out towards the sides as I go out. And that will also imply the shape and fullness of my lips. And I'm just starting with a little bit of yellow because it's the lightest color and it's, you know, the easiest to do. But you can see I am for sure painting right over those black lines. See how much easier that is this time? Yeah. yeah. Go back and do the rainbow lips this way. The Lisa Frank ones, you will love it. It will be much better. By having a strong sense of yellow and blue and red, what happens with these is they start to feel like primary colors, even though we have a few secondary colors in there like orange and green and purple, but they seem like they were, like the way it was painted out is it makes them feel like they were, um, uh, creating today. Oh my goodness, John, Deborah Evans, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Today was a hard day for me to get up here. Um, oh yeah, thank you. Deborah. Yeah, it's just a little, my blood sugar's just been a little bit crazy and oof, but I'm with you guys. I got a little orange juice here. You may see me stop every once in a while. Though. Take it. Yeah, we've been. Yeah, been. We're going to just paint this yellow, but notice that all important curve. Can you see that even on the yellow? So brush stroke is one of those weird things that is present in all of your paintings from your first painting to your 1500 painting to that maybe where you're where I am. I'm like on, 
I don't know, 10,000 paintings probably in my lifetime. And <laughs> like seven of them are probably from YouTube, right? That kind of a thing. Um, you know, uh, but one of the things that you will notice from that painting to your very last is that brush stroke is part of the composition and the directionality and texture that's created also impacts your final result, not just your color and not just your value, right? Not just shading and not just the colors that you choose. I'm making sure I'm covering my white canvas. You know, that's fine. The black is going to go over this, no problem. And I thought you guys might like to see a bunch of different blacks for short. So, like, I'm, I have all the blacks over here. I got Carbon and Mars yep. and Lamp and them. Flat and Payne's Gray. I got all of them. I feel like I could make that whole everything you need to know about black video in, like, one minute. I feel like that's in me. <laughs> I don't know, though. All right. So, this first layer, that wasn't that challenging. Right? The yellow's in there. You can kind of see the brush strokes curving out. That's that's kind that's like good there. I'm gonna dry this and then we're gonna come in and do more layers. The layers, yeah. This is so it's important to dry fully between the layers. That way the next layer doesn't pick up the other layer and with yellow, yellow is um, not one of those ones that's a heavy tinting. It tends to get overrun by the other colors more, which is also why we're putting it in there now, is it'll help preserve some of those. The, the white will keep the yellow bright, but the other colors coming in will ultimately, because they're darker in tone, I think is how they say it, that they darken it up. But, you know, that's for the Sherpa to tell you more about next, at the next step because that's that's what she does. She teaches you guys about the arts. Uh, we got a question uh, from Amy is if stress is taking its toll. Is stress? I think stress takes a toll on all of us. I, I've never heard anyone. I mean, I guess there are maybe some people like stress. I love it. But uh, most people are like, oh, stress. And yeah, you know, uh, we've got such an update video we've got to do. Um, <sighs> So Hard many. to do. We'll we get gotta there. We got to do an update video and <laughs> let you guys know why, but we're okay. I'm okay. I do think that stress is something we should all take seriously <laughs> in life because it can be a real problem. <laughs> but yeah, no, it can wear anybody. I, no, I don't think anyone's above it. Do you, John? No. That's why I like my painting time with you guys because even if I'm worn out or tired or need a sip of orange juice, I know I'm going to feel better because I spent some time with you guys and I spent some time painting. And those two things, always good. Always, always good. I got to bump into someone that I hadn't seen in a while recently, and that was really lovely. Um, I actually got to run into, I don't know if you guys will remember Flame Gremlin. I got to run into Flame Gremlin, and that mm -hmm. was really fun. See everybody and catch up. I missed a lot. All right, I'm going to take some Cad Red and some Cad Yellow in my D brush. You can use any scratchy brush you have or just continue with your round brush. I just like the dry brushing scratchiness of this. See how I'm taking this orange that I mixed here? Still curving. I am dry brushing. That's allowing some of the um, yellow to show through underneath. I might come in here with like a little more of my red and dust it. And then as I come here, I might kind of exaggerate that direction. So can you tell when I'm trying to exaggerate a direction or shape how my brush stroke changes? It's just a weird thing. I make these little decisions. And you can still go over the black because we're going to paint this back in. And when we do, the lips are just going to pop out. Back into my yellow for a bright orange. Maybe even more yellow for a brighter orange. All right, let's, let's bring a little bit of this orange here. And come here, and I'm also distributing a little bit of orange. Notice that curve to that brush stroke. You're new to painting, but you can still do this, right? You've still got this. So like, even if we're doing something, you're like, oh, I haven't ever thought about my brush stroke curve before. First day painting, you can start thinking about it. And a little bit right there. And then I'm going to go maybe a little more into my red here.
Add a little bit there. It's fun to just drop it around, right? Maybe a little kiss of that right there in that under part of the lip. By the way, this technique I think will work for anything. You could do uh, your national flag, you could do uh, the colors of a local team or organization. Um, I think you could customize this technique because of the way this is for just about anything that you're, you're about in your community and it would look really good, don't you? I totally do. Yeah, I think it would look really, really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry everything because I don't want my colors to do mixing on the canvas right. and lose their brightness. That's another thing that if you're new, you might not know. If you need your colors to stay vibrant, color theory starts to come into play. <gasps> Ramona, you are amazing. Ramona was just very generous and I really appreciate it so Thank much. Thank you. So much going on in our lives right now. I Thank really you, appreciate Ramona. it. Thank you. I'm going to dry this and you guys dry that. So your colors stay bright. Yep. And I will check Judy in just a minute uh, what she said. I'm not sure if she caught that, but I will here in a minute check that. Uh, oftentimes um, she, it's funny because I've seen her, she just rolls that little brush around in her finger and doesn't even think about sometimes the, the change in position that she does. So I'll have to ask what part of the, whether it was the, the, the rounded or the flatted part of the D or maybe she was using the edge of the round or the flat of the edge or the edge of the flat. You know, it's all those parts, but we'll have to ask her. Let's see here. Let's see here. Very, very thoroughly, thoroughly drying to make sure that we get all of that paint dry so it doesn't blend or do any of that stuff. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that Flame Gremlin was in the chat earlier. Hey, did you, uh... I don't know if, uh, still here, if you are. Hi. <laughs> did you catch the, uh, what part of the brush were you using there? The round of the flat, the flat of the round? I, um, was using, honestly, I was using this arc here and letting it go into this. And then sometimes I come in on the flat, but I come back up on that stroke. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So stroke comes down on the slap, but also comes back on the round, creating that diffuse blending. It's a nice feature of this brush. It isn't the only brush that will do this technique. So um, I definitely encourage it. I just uh, don't know if uh, um, you have to have it by any means. I wouldn't do that to you, I don't think. I think it's huh. great, but other stuff will do the job. Does that make sense? It does. You're being so quiet. I'm like, no, did you're I stick my foot in no, my mouth? No, you're totally I feel fine. Like I would. Ready? Yes. <laughs> Four. All right. You did everything perfect. All right. Now we're going to go into some blue, and I'm going to take a little bit of my titanium white and work it into my D brush and a little bit of blue. So we can really see the blue. We want it to be a bright blue. Sometimes uh, phthalo blue is very transparent, so the white helps build that up. And then also it's quite dark. But that's how I can see the blue well over my yellow and red. And I'm just lightly dry brushing. And so you can kind of layer over and it gets quite bright and vibrant and fun. There we go there. And then you're going to want to bring that same sort of exciting brush stroke over here. I like to leave some of it open. I don't erase all my yellow. Yellow is hard to put back, right? So that's why I'm being kind of light with it, the blue, because the yellow is a hard color to, to yellow is so transparent in everybody's line. That's just the nature of the pigment that you really got to think about it. A little blue. A little white, nice little blue and orange contrast there. Hmm, you got a little excited with the blue for a second. <laughs> That's okay. That is okay, but notice that curve, that really helps define these lips. By the way, this is also true on regular lip projects. When you're doing regular lip projects, you will find that the curve of the brush stroke is huge to the result. 
Now I'm going to come over here to my green. Actually, I'll rinse my brush out a bit and maybe put out a little more yellow because I want my green to be a bit brighter than phthalo green is. Phthalo green, um, the kind I have, tends to bias a little bit to the blue shade of the spectrum and can be a little turquoisey or mint and I want something that's a little brighter green. I've got a whole video on mixing greens that's a minute that you can watch if you're like, mm, mixing greens, it frustrates me. No more will it frustrate you because I have a cool video. I'm gonna make sure that my brush isn't too wet. That's an easy thing that can happen with the hog. I'm gonna come here and add some little pops of color here and there oh. for fun. Be playful, even maybe more playful than last time, right? Because color is intrinsically fairly fun, I think. I'm gonna add a little bit of green to the bottom. Kind of blending that through. Not terrible. No. Just a little bit of fun there. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Pretty nice. Now I want to um, dry this and we're going to put one last little run and pops of color before we paint in the black. And thank you, Tiffany. I'm not sure if we cut the tears. Thank you. We appreciate all of the love and support from our community. You guys really have no idea. We have been going through so many little changes, changes, changes. Like today I had to rebuild the studio kind of again, but I'm going to do it again. Like we have a whole nother studio rebuild coming because I did, I did the thing where I wanted cinnamon to have a really pretty studio. So I painted everything white so I could put like pretty flowers and things on it. And then when I painted it all white, it reflected the green background. So now I gotta go paint it all black and it's all going to be rebuilt again. So it's been crazy, but I learn everything, something every time. So, okay. Here we go. On to the next step. Yes? I want to say thank you to Tiffany Williams real quick. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. All right. I'm going to grab a little bit of my red and my magenta together a bit. A little biased uh, to the magenta. I'm just kind of making this brighter color. This will help some of my other colors pop. Uh, you can get a little white into it to really help it flash. So it's almost a pink, if that makes sense. Maybe a little bit curved right there and a bit there. I don't want to do too much. I just want some of it here and there. And then I might come back with some just bright red a few places. See how we're doing? Just working that in a few places. That was fun. It's just like you got to get in there and you got to be brave, though. You got to be like, eh. Just a little hint of a color that will show up in that space. Now, I don't know that we have to dry it, but if you are someone who rests your hands on the canvas, you may want to, just so that we come in and put in the black that you're not dragging paint color into where you have the black paint. So let's go ahead and dry this just thoroughly. Dry it. Yeah, that's a good idea. That will make it easier for So we're just double checking, making sure everything's looking good. I'm gonna double check all the cameras here. Choo -choo -choo. Let's check this. Look here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Double check our focus on camera one. That's looking okay. And we'll double check our camera focus over here. Are you looking okay? Four, I'm gonna double check it. Uh, pretty tight focus there, we'll double check it. All right. Okay. I think we double checked it. All right, but now let's, right. Gonna add, let's add another we're, step here, though. If we're good. Let's add a step, and we're going to start painting in black. I'm going to use that number eight Simply Simmons round. Very carefully come back to where I had my lines in the first place. 
And again, because it's black paint, I don't have to worry about the pencil uh, coming up through this because this is really going to overpower anything completely, you know. But I think we really, really solved the issues that we had uh, with uh, student paints not being able to cover black by coming at it this way. When I say to my students, and I say this a lot, that there, it's very rare that it's one way to do something in art. Art uh, is by nature uh, experimental and playful, and there's usually a bunch of ways to do something. So, you know, if you have someone saying, oh, there's only, this is the only way this can be done, I would distrust their sentence very quickly. I'd be like, maybe you know what you're talking about, but maybe you do not. Maybe. They're surprised there's no opera pink today. There's no what? Opera pink. Uh, no opera pink today. Um, we don't really use opera pink. I know, but th there was there was a. Uh, I think you're thinking of my mom. Oh. I introduced my mom to Holbein a few years back, uh, especially the luminous colors, and she just fell in love with that opera pink. Man. Oh, that's what it was. We must be thinking about. Uh, Amy was like the. What about the opera pink? I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. We used to do, we, it was a Holbein color. That's it was a it Holbein was. color. Yeah, we, don't, we just don't, I don't think we even have our Holbein paint here yet with us. Mm -mm. So that's probably why we didn't have any. <laughs> so we like enough. Holbein very much. Holbein is one of the brands that I do recommend. It can be a little hard to locate in North America. It's a Japanese mm. brand. It's very good. They're good at pigment. Yes. And they're a fine, fine art company. They're one of the ones where I'm like, yay. But it's just, it is hard for you guys to locate that stuff sometimes. Oh, congratulations to the bug who has been a member for 30 months, man. Hello, the bug. Uh, if you're seeing that, what that means is that they are in Emoji Club or... Um, so we have a patronage off of our website and we have a patronage off of YouTube. You can pick whichever one is, is good for you. And then there's also this thing called Emoji Club, which is just extra emojis that are custom only for this channel. Uh-huh. Periodically, I go through design sprints on them. Okay. I think I may switch to my angle brush because I feel like it's going to pull out the paint on this uh, canvas a little easier. Yeah. So I'm going to switch to it because it's got a nice big wide flat. So this is the three quarter inch catalyst. It's four acrylic paint. It's a very good brush. Ah, cover more ground. Cover more ground. I'm like, I love our slow pace, but we got to cook along today. That's a, it's getting a, ridiculous, a right? Casual stroll. Just being a little casual here. But what we have done is kept our colors bright and I will consider that a win no matter what. Sometimes you'll find with black that you need a couple coats of paint um, to get a deep and even coverage. That's not unheard of. Um, and the less uh, money you're spending on your paint, the more likely you are to need to hit it with a couple coats. Mm. That's the workaround, though. They couple have coats. A couple coats. I appreciate you guys hanging in with me. I'm sorry I'm a little low key today. I am good. I am okay. I've been talking to my mom every day. Yes, you have. There's been good talks. It's been really nice. Yeah, it has. I get to talk to John occasionally too. Yeah, John and John Little talk on occasion. That gets very confusing for mom and I because uh, our husbands are both named John. So fun times during the family dinner table. I have an H. He does not. He does not. Somehow that just doesn't translate in the John John sentence. You just it, it, <laughs> you got to know the spelling in your head. But you can hear it if you know it. 
You can hear it if you know it. Is that what you two are going with? You can hear it Ask if you know him. it. <laughs> like if we're in a room and somebody calls me, I know which one they're calling. Now, I might, uh, I'm looking at this, and I might come here and just make sure if I've got to put a little bit of paint back. Can you see how I just did that there? I saw it. I snuck because you were fast. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, ooh, that got a little snatched. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little bit too much. And I will come back in. I'm using my green because um, I overclipped. But I can come back in and reshape things if I feel like it needs it. Maybe that was a little more yellow. Don't mind. Yeah. Just being playful with it. And sometimes when I put a color in, I come in and put it back around so that everything stays bright and cheerful. Uh... I'm not sure what Lindsay Michelle means, but I feel like it's something in um, transparency. Let me go take a look here. And um, if one of the, I think I've got some videos on that. So uh, that might be something to share, especially the beginner acrylic painting course, if we have a link for that for Lindsay, because mm. I think that covers a lot of those core issues in the paint is making sure you do those everything you need to know about acrylic, everything you need to know about techniques, everything you need to know about brush strokes, because that can get you through those things and find those issues in. Yeah, and if you guys are having trouble with the, the transparency and the order of uh, laying those colors, oftentimes the reason why Cinnamon does put the colors down in this order is it helps preserve the colors for some student paints. So um, if you have a pro paint, oftentimes it won't matter as much the order that you lay them down. But if you're using a student paint, the, that's where you, a little bit less pigment in a paint really shows through when you're stacking the paints on top of each other. That pigment density is sometimes what they call it. So um, if, you're, if you're aware of this, it's something that you can work, you, you can work with and it's not a big deal. But it's, it's one of the differences between what they call a pro paint and a beginner or student paint is that pigment density, and that, that contributes to I'm going to hit this with a second coat of black. Okay, we're going we're gonna to keep that on the same step? Yeah, we can do this. Two, let's call it two coats of black dry between. I'm going to put out my paint actually direct to canvas. This is direct a weird little to canvas. cheeky cheat I do. Ooh, you just, just like you could do that? You can just go directly on and it's no big deal? Just, you know. It's no big deal just to put it right down there on it? It really isn't. Um, if you're quick like me and you work through the canvas before the paint dries, it's not even an issue at all. And I always have a good sense of how much paint I'm going to need because I've been doing this for a minute. The reason I don't like just like when, like on the retreat, am I going to have everybody put their paint direct to canvas? Probably not. <laughs> yep. Because it's hard to guesstimate that out. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm very familiar with these tools, these surfaces, really everything I'm working on here is just very familiar to me. So I can guesstimate things out with a pretty good degree of accuracy. If you change canvases on me and I'd never used it before or paint on me and I'd never used it before, I might not do a direct to canvas put out. I, I get the popularity of those videos that put out bloop, bloop, bloop of paint and then do a bunch of fade cuts and don't show you all the painting that was done. And yeah. Like, I, I totally get the zen of just watching them come in, but I would never bloop, bloop out paint, except that it's a, perf I get that it's a performance thing. Um, but it's also that those people are, they're fairly confident in what they're going to use. And there's going to be a cut or an edit or a fade cut or something mm -hmm. where the process to blend all that in or get that under control isn't, you're not going to get drugged through that because some of those videos are meant to be short. They're meant to be just a few minutes to piano music. And, you know, 
it so it's like one of those many many things that's okay based on experience and knowing what you're doing and try not to let videos make you feel like that's how it's supposed to be done because yeah. sometimes it's just it makes a good looking video that's and true. and it gets good view count sometimes that's all it is for creators and you know you just got to kind of reframe it in your mind of like oh this is like a performance piece performance not in, even if it says tutorial tutorial is a search term that does very very well so everybody puts it on their stuff right they may not be teaching anything um and so it doesn't really matter what it says i just want you to look at it be like is this really helping me or showing me or is this like a demo and i should mm. take it for inspiration those are good things to be able to regulate in your own viewing yes let's dry, dry this. the next yes. you have to dry them because you don't want any of the little and especially around the edges because what happens is as you start to paint around the edges, sometimes little groups of black will come along the outside edge that will be thicker than what you expect, and they stay that way, and your hand will accidentally touch them, or your brush will accidentally touch them, and then it'll gloop, and then gloop, 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 and you're glooped. That's a technical art term for paint hiding on the edge of the surface that jumps onto other things. It gloops you. So... Make sure you don't do that. And hmm, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out our website. We got all sorts of cool stuff. The the um, e-commerce stuff is really coming along. We're going to see a major update here, I think, this week where we get to get our shipping thing fixed. It's uh, been, a, been a journey there. But uh, we should get our new rates locked in sometime here very, very soon. And you'll see those. Uh, so that, that'll get a lot better. And uh, now Phew. we can do a new step. We can, can do a new step. All it's right. all dry. Duh. And you got all the edge uh, so you don't get gloopies? I have. Well, I mean, I don't know that I do, but we'll find out, won't we? We'll, we'll find I'm out. I'm going to pour out a little bit of fluid white acrylic. You can thin your acrylic with water. You can use craft paint. I like to use this and this. You'll notice it was in the description um, with paintings like this, the Posca pen and the fluid white, because they both do a fairly decent job. Now I'm going to do my white lines here. You can keep painting layers or colors. There's really not a limit to how much you can layer up on this. Um, it's a fun, fun thing. Hopefully I don't have too much black on here and I'm going to come underneath the lip right here and I'm gonna paint with the white a downward little drip see the two little lines I'm not gonna do gravity drips this time all right we're not gonna be doing that no sorry Bob a little bit of a line down there and this is really gonna be just about creating these little white lines that represent these little drips. And I do find sometimes it's nice to kind of connect them to the lip and, you know, you run them down. It's like a pretty heavy one. So that sort of looks like paint running, doesn't it? Yeah. You can even draw a wide drip like that. You guys are doing great. Be patient with yourself and don't be hypercritical of what you're doing. It's not going to help you in your painting process. What will help you is take a deep breath, though. <sighs> I can do drips like that. Those are sort of fun. I don't know. Every time I do it, I get a little playful, so... This is probably a little more experiential for me <laughs> because they're fun. I've been doing drips online with students for too many years. And uh, sometimes you guys find them easy and sometimes you guys find them hard. And I'm always looking for new ways to make them easier mm -hmm. and less messy. I like that there. That's very creative to me. Kind of fun to put them in, isn't it? All right. 
Okay, there we go. And maybe some down here. I like to, you'll notice, make them thick at the bottom and kind of do some little splashy splashes because I think those are fun. So if it's a stream that goes off, the stream can become thicker or thinner as it comes down. But where it's a drop that ends, if you've ever watched water drops on your window, you'll notice that they wait. Mm -hmm. So those are little tricks that we can use as artists, these little observances about how things are in other places to help us paint something that isn't uh, from a real reference. Right. Like this is just from imagination. So when you're doing something that's from imagination and you're not using a reference, you still reference the real world, I think. That's pretty good. All right. Let's dry uh, that thoroughly. Because we don't want that to go everywhere. And we put yeah. that out kind of thickly and we'll need a little control over it. Yeah, so when you're doing that, it's... It's again, as she said, you, you don't want the white to, to get picked up in any of the next layers. So you want to make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly dry that. Get it all the way. Uh... So how can I keep from getting smudge marks from serial paper when holding it to trace? Um, generally, just being gentle with your hands. Uh, it, it, that the serial paper is designed to transfer marks very easily. Um, so unfortunately, that is a side effect of it. Is that you? You know, you can lean on the paper, and it will leak, make little smudgy marks. Um, but all types of like carbon paper will do that as well. Different types of transfer papers. Um, they are pressure sensitive. Oftentimes, that's how they're uh, they they activate that. So, just one of those um, those things where we gotta be careful, and that will hopefully help. Okay, hmm? just switching. Switching? Yeah. All right. Ready for the next yes, step? Yes, I think we are. Okay. So I'm going to take my quinacridone and my ultramarine blue, and I'm going to work them together, making a purple. You could just use purple paint if you have purple paint, but I just very much like this purple. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the white so we can reveal it. And I'm going to paint right over, maybe even up into my lip a little bit. Let's come down here and add some more little purple. And if I need more white, I'll get a little more white. See what I'm doing? I'll come get a little more of the quinacridone and white. I definitely, definitely um, enjoy that part of the process. I rinse out. Me too. Yeah, I like watching this. It's just chill. It's just something chill to do, you know, and sometimes you just need something chill. I can bring that down here and then I might come down the yellow, like on this one with a little bit of yellow. And you can see how the yellow really shows um, because the white is here. That can be really challenging to get worked out. I'll bring a little yellow here. And I may need to put up some more yellow paint because I'm using a lot of yellow in this. And that's okay, guys. That is okay. And you're okay. We are okay. Let's take a deep breath. We're okay. Things are all right in the yeah. world. We're all right. I might grab a little bit of white here just to improve coverage. Kind of blend up here.
Remember, anything you don't like, you can come back with black and fix too. So it's a highly fixable painting if you're feeling frustrated. I can come and get into my orange. And I might kind of add a little orange to the bottom of that drop. Brushing up a little bit to that side. That's just sort of fun. You notice that I bring a little bit of these lines curled up, don't I? Into those lips. And that really, that helps. So that little layer is a pretty powerful, intense, you can see I bring that right over the white. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta and some white. This time I'll blend that in. So I, what just takes the color of the drips for me is kind of what's above them and what will blend in well. Right. You know, and that lets me be maybe a little more playful and have a little more fun when I'm painting those in. Get a little bit of the blue here. You can see I can blend it up over what I have. Let's get a little bit of bright green going. Layering back over the blue. That layering is a easy to do touch that makes a big difference in the final painting. Rinse out again a little bit. I get a little bit of my white and just my yellow. Just brushing those up, curving those brush strokes. So they're blending in. And then I think my last little touch is I'm going to add um, some little blue over to that one drip. Yeah. I did that the first time and I really liked it. Oh yeah, it does turn out nice. Kind of mix it in a little bit there. Maybe a little bit right here with a little yellow. It's just playful. And that's really all you've got to do to get it to this point. So we're going to dry that. And um, when we come back, I'll show you the weird finishing move that brings the whole thing together uh -huh. that you are going to love. This really, really is a simple one. So if you're just, if you're new, to uh, to trying to paint, and this is the first time you've uh, you're, you're watching this, and you're like, hmm, should I try it? Yes, definitely. This is this is one of those ones that you should definitely try out. It's very approachable, very easy to do. Um, there's all the resources on our website, yardsherpa.com. You can go check all those out, find all that stuff for you there, and. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. What else? Links in the description down below. The moderators are here. Definitely check that out. If you need any questions, they will be there. Um, doo -doo -doo. What else do we have going on here? Thank you guys for joining us. Um, 
don't forget, uh, like I said, down in the, in the links in the description below, we've got all sorts of stuff uh, and links for you to, to know what to do. But back to cinnamon. All right, so we're going to take our round brush again, or you can take your detail round if your big round isn't giving you good results. And I'm going to come along the top of my painting with this brush. And I'm going to make a little run of broken white line. These are like the reflections mm -hmm. that we all now draw on our face. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> like contour away. Now let's put a couple, like right here, these are just little reflections that happen on the painting. Mm -hmm. And maybe a little bit here. Just a little fine white line between the black and the lip to show reflection. When we have that in, I'm going to come here, making curved lines. I don't want to take out everything I painted in. It needs to be less is more, but yeah. this is what's making the reflections on the lips. That curve that we've been practicing, this whole painting is a bigger deal now. Some of these lines are short and long. I don't mind if the brush kind of opens up and breaks because that gives me a nice result in that way. Come here and maybe kind of define those corners. And then right here, we start the same thing again. See how we're doing? Yeah. Sometimes I touch my brush barely at all to get fine lines, and sometimes I touch it heavy to get heavy lines, and it's all just very chill. And hopefully at this point you see what I mean about, like, you could use any colors for anything that you, that colors, or you could be like, you could mm -hmm. do anything. Your, your local, like, bridge club, they got colors, you could do lips for that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I think this is a fun project and technique that you can just use and customize. If you're one of our labs teachers, um, sometimes I give these tips also for you guys. Uh, we let people teach the work I do here commercially if they get a labs license from us, which is a very cheap license. That just means that we can support them and we don't have to be like content takedown. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but sometimes I think about you guys out there in the world of painting parties and I'm, I give the tips, not just for your home parties, but for our labs businesses. Yep. Okay. Let's call that a step. Let's dry it. And then we'll finish the drips. Okay. This is so close guys. Really. This is turning out nice. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Come on, hang out dry thoroughly at this next thing so we get all of that done. Don't forget, if you sign up on our website as a member, theartsherpa.com, you'll get uh, our newsletter. In our newsletter, we have all sorts of new stuff that comes out where we tell you guys about that, which is really kind of cool. Um, so definitely check all that out. Uh, you know, we really love seeing you guys. Um, it's really awesome, especially all the new folks here in this. So... There we go. Oh. You were saying? Uh, I had a detail brush that I losted it. Oh. I did. I lost it proper. I super losted it. I have a Posca pen, so I'm not that panicked, but I am curious as to where it went. <laughs> I'll try to use this instead of the one I pulled out. We'll start with the Posca <laughs> since I know where that is. I'm going to take this here. Now, when I start these, I, um, you want to, let's see if we've got this here. You just press it down. You don't pump it up and down like other pens. See that, that yeah. causes the ink to release. I'm going to pull that off of my thing. I just wanted you to see the action. Okay. So how, that's how you get them to go. 
and come here and along this little side I'm going to do a nice little line and some interior reflections on that to help that look very much like a drip. Yeah. Now line that one out down and I can make little squiggles. The other thing that you can do if you don't do that is you can take a detail pen, a detail brush like this number four Raphael Precision, because I don't know where I put the number one Princeton. Same brush though. <laughs> Remember how I said that, like they don't have common brush sizes? Yeah, but everybody makes like basically the same brushes. So they don't all make them as well as each other, but they all make them. So see how you can come here and make little very similar thing. It really is just dependent on your line control. How, how good is your line control with your brushes and if you need the Posca. The reflections are the big thing. Oh yeah. These little squiggles that show the light, yeah, that is the big thing. That's looking cool. There's all those extra little... Yeah, just little bits there. It just gives it that pop. It really does. And it's just something fun. It works big, it works small, it works with any colors. We almost did it at the retreat, but then I realized what my mom was doing, so I wanted something a little matchy-matchy. Mm. A little matchy-matchy. A little matchy-matchy. So I just kind of line these little drops out. They turn out nice. They do. They just come together, and then you're like, oh, a nice heavy little reflection there. Right. And then if you make little shapes where it's kind of gone up and then little reflections out, that will look like some light has hit. Yeah. So that's another fun thing that you do. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit little bit cool, like chiller today. <laughs> Maybe that's nice though. Maybe you're like, oh, it's good to have a mellow day. Yeah, some days it is. Some days it's good to have a mellow day. And every day I paint with you guys, um, I'm, there's, you're going to get a lot more shorts through the retreat, which is going to be through the next. The, the girls' face is when we're officially back. Mm -hmm. We leave at the, you know, and the one, and then we come back on the girls' face. Um, but you'll see shorts and cool things besides our, you know, our lives. And then there's going to be a bunch of stuff that's happening that's super fun. Notice that I break the line sometimes when I'm making reflections. Yeah, I do see that. And remember, you can do this also with a pen. Yeah. See? So there's, there's, you can also come in here and make these lines with a pen. So the little detail brush, if the big brush is making you unhappy, it's okay. You just go detail brush and then it you're good. It turned out so nice. Just a little bit of something fun. Now, here's a weird rule of art that you guys don't need to worry about, but it's fun to tell you about. If I used it to paint my painting then it's considered uh, proper to sign with one of those medium because later if I'm dead and somebody's at the Antiques Roadshow, which is, a, which is a, interestingly enough, a fantasy of Flame Gremlin <laughs> because uh, she knows my artwork so well, uh, to like, be like, I will identify it because I've had to look at all these paintings so much. <laughs> so if I was there, Flame would appreciate that right now I use this Posca pen. <laughs> I don't know weird hmm. so you know guys it's just 
It's a light painting to get you started in a concept, and it's really? one that's highly customizable to your life that you can easily do it again and again. Once you have the traceable, once you have the technique down, you can do kisses, you can do all kinds of things. And again, you can use colors and for your cheer squad. It's just, it's just really make this your own. Uh, I, I would like to ask that only people that spread love and light use it. <laughs> Now, we have... On occasion, I see my stuff get used away. I'm like, hmm, I don't love that. Let's see here. Before we... Totally out there in the world, you know? The way, we've really, this, we're going to look back at this one real quick. This is really nice. This turned out really nice. Oh, thank you. So everybody everybody sees this one, but we're going we're gonna to go on to look at some other people's paintings. Here yeah, right because we're doing that now. We're trying. We're showing you guys this art on we're our channel. Try. We're running... So, look, I do this so you guys feel like the superstar. So this is a nice thing I can do. And John I'm going to go do. down here, but I have to go to... This thing, and then I have to We're turn my drippy this. lips for a half a minute. There we go. We're gonna turn off that, and then I'm gonna go down and swap that image out. We're gonna go. We're gonna show some of your art, and if you want to submit your work, basically you take a picture of a tutorial of mine. Okay, a tutorial of mine that you have done, a painting of mine that you've done. So you painted along with me, and you've done it. And then you send it to support at the with the header to put it in the show. And the mods will try to get those to John and you may see them in one of our live shows. And uh, then you can see your whole family secret. Oh, let's get you oh this is good. I know which painting this is. Oh, that looks good. That looks good without the guy. And I love it in those tones. That's beautiful. Now, I'm going I'm to go back here. That was I think from this is in Jan. A, every once in a while, I like my students' paintings more than mine. This is one of those paintings. I really like this. This is gorgeous. <laughs> really stupendous i love the um line work in the ocean and on the rocks it and uh just the wonderful scuffy waves just fantastic scuff just perfect in every way so, thank you jam for sharing that and thank the, you let's seriously see here. He, let's see the next one is from kayla hey see kayla here. hi kayla Get it up here do, 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 where did it go there it is and nobody paid any money to go. be featured no, this is just that feature you because i love you there's Kayla. Oh my goodness, that's a blast from the past. I remember doing that. Oh my goodness, I love that. And she's got such a nice positioning. I love the little ribbons in her bun. It's a great job. Here, now we have Diane. Excellent. <gasps> the sisters. Okay, so I will say that as far as I know in art, I was the first person to do the Q-tips. <laughs> and that was because of this painting. Uh, yep. <laughs> That doesn't mean other people can't do Q-tips. They can't. And they can even do it better than me. I'm just saying. I got accused of, of stealing another artist's artwork the other day. And I was like, that would be amazing because I'd need a time machine because I painted this years before him. No shade to him. Or here's a fun idea. Common reference photo. <gasps> we both licensed from the same photo site. Could be Yay! possible too. I like my painting. I mean, the guy didn't have to like my painting. That was fine. It was the sort of... You did this, and I'm like, I don't, I don't think I did, because if I had a time machine, I would be uh, doing other things with my time. I would here's be Brooks painting. Oh, Brooke, fantastic! That was from one of our 13 days of Halloween, and I love. See, you got your shine down in the in the the lip. See what I'm saying? I teach mm -hmm. this stuff. The lip, the curve is perfect. Good job. I love it. Thank you. I love, see, I last, love seeing the result when you guys paint along with me. Here's our last one for today, ah! and this is from Alyssa. Alyssa. Now, all these things that you're seeing are lessons. These are students' results, and these are paintings that you can all find online. I love what you did here, Alyssa. This is one of my favorites. I remember designing these. Um, some of my best designs come from these weird moments where I'm like, oh, I'm so tired of my life. I'm just going to paint something, and then something comes out, and then I'm like, oh, well, well now we're all going to paint this because this is too cute. <laughs> and that these two birds were... Me just painting out some quirk that was going on, something in my head that I got in there and that I had to get out. And the birds represented those The birds represented feelings. those feelings. And then I was like, that's too cute to not make a lesson out of. That happens a lot. The bear coming up is going to be a lot of fun, guys. That's going to be up uh, uh, this upcoming um, Thursday. Now, Monday night, my mom has a class on Ginger Cook Live. I think it's a live and not a premiere. I'm not sure. Okay. So don't hold me to that. I'm not responsible. I don't do that content. I support that content. And I love that content because it's my mom, but I am not in charge of contenting it. <laughs> right. So if I say something wrong, it's just because I wasn't paying attention on the morning call. So, But that's, that's Monday. And yeah. then Thursday is the bear. 
And then the, the f- bear. And then Tuesday on the 22nd is the girl the who's girl. like sort of like a current self portrait. I realized that when I looked at it, I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm like, it's not that self portraits ever have to look like you, but sometimes paintings reflect where you're at. I'll mm. notice like the eyes of my animals or the eyes of, or that everything's like, <sighs> so if you're like in a place where you're like, I just need to center and have a deep breath, she's coming out. My bear goes with all the little floral animals I've done. So if you like him, there's a cow, there's a chicken, there's lots of girls, there's other stuff and more stuff coming. Cause I know I owe the kids some hamsters and some mice. I have been listening, I have been listening. So I am paying attention. You guys are incredible. Listen, y'all are amazing. Um, you know, it, I'm just catching up on channels. I'm, just, I'm always surprised when people are still here. I think you guys are amazing. I love showing your paintings. Again, if you did a tutorial with me and you'd like to show it on the show, send it in to support at theartsherpa.com. You can still share it over on the Facebook group in the closed group. If you're like, I'm not ready to show everyone. I want just my art friends to see it. That's what the Facebook group is for. You can show it over there and know that you're going to be supported at every stage of your art journey, even painting one where you didn't know what tools to have and you didn't know what colors to have and you're not really sure how it came out because we've all been there mm. and we get it and we know that you can do it so you can share it there super safely. But if you're like feeling kind of chuffed and you're like, I'm ready to show this to the world, support at theartsherpa.com. Share the tutorial you did with me. It's free. Totally <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I will see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Hopefully this button will work.